In several videos in my channel, I already talked about layer 3 switching for Ubiquiti Unify switches, but all of them were just about settings inside one switch. This time, in this video, let's talk about inter-VLAN switching between two Unify layer 3 switches. On the screen, you can see three switches. The top one and the bottom one are what we are going to use in this video. The top one is the Enterprise PoE. The bottom one is Enterprise XG. First, let's see the scenario when you use layer 2 settings. On the screen, you can see the simplified network diagram. We have the USW Enterprise XG and it's connected with the USW Enterprise PoE using that cable and then the connection speed is 25 gigabits. For this Enterprise X3, I connected with a Synology NAS with a 10 GBE connection. For the MacBook, I connected to the Enterprise PoE using the 2.5 GBE connection. As you can see, I use PFSS as the router. For these two testing devices, they belong to two different VLANs. Let's briefly look at the settings in Unify Controller. This is the Enterprise 24 PoE switch. MacBook Pro is connected to this part from the light blue color. You can see it's 2.5 gigabits. Synology NAS is connected to this part and the color shows is 10 gigabits. From the Unify Controller network setting, let me show you the two VLAN configurations briefly. Because I use PFSense, so in Controller I simply create them as VLAN only network and indicate the VLAN number. That's it. Pretty simple setting. Now let me run iPerf3 from the MacBook. The target is in VLAN 99, which is Synology. Okay, it seems the speed is pretty decent. It's close to 2.5 gigabits upper limit. You may wonder why for layer 2 we also achieve such a good speed. Let me show you. This is the Enterprise XG switch. See the very last part? It's showing a special sign there. It means it's the uplink, which is connected to my PFSense. From the color, you can tell it's 10 gigabits. Because my PFSense, the router, is connected to the switch with a 10 gigabit connection. So that's why you don't notice any difference in the test we just did. But let me force this connection to be one gigabit part profile override and in the link speed i will force it to one gigabit and let me apply the change now let me do the exact same iperf3 testing let's see what's the performance now let me run the exact same command from the macbook pro as you can see, the network speed is less than one gigabit already. So we just changed the uplink speed to PFSense. Let's see the trace route command output from this VLAN 98 to the VLAN 99. First, it need to reach the 98.1 IP address, which is my PFSense. Then the PFSense routed to the 99.100, which is the Synology. Because the route has to go through PFSense and the 1 gigabit becomes the bottleneck. We'll finish the testing for the left side, which is the layer 2 scenario. And let's keep the exact same physical links, even this 1 gigabit connection. But I'm going to set up the layer 3 switching on these two unified switches. Then let's do the same testing to see whether the performance is improved. Now we are back to Unify Controller. Here in the network setting, you can see these two VLANs. Let's go to them one by one to see how the layer 3 switching work in the Unify Controller settings. It's a corporate network. Remember for the test we just did, it's VLAN only because in the previous case, I want PFSS to control the VLANs, but for this Unify layer 3 switching, I want the switch itself to control the VLAN, give it VLAN ID, and this is the crucial part. For the Enterprise XG, I set up this 
VLAN 100 DHCP settings, you can refer to my another video, which is for PFSense and Unify Layer 3 switching topic. Here, I won't waste your time on the DHCP settings. Remember, for VLAN 100, we set Gateway as the Enterprise XG. Then, let's go to another network. This one, VLAN 200. It's connected to another Unify switch, which is the Enterprise 24 PoE. Let me SSH into the two switches. Let's analyze what's the exact technical settings and the routings behind the screen in the Unify switches. I just opened two terminals. In the left, I want to connect to the Enterprise PoE switch. In the right, I want to connect to the Enterprise XG switch. First, let me try the PoE switch. I'm going to SSH into the server. Okay, we are in the Enterprise 24 PoE. And you want to tell NAT to itself. We are in the UBNT management interface, enable EN for short, just to enter the privileged mode, see the prompt has changed. Then you want to run the command show IP interface brief. As you can see, there are two VLANs generated in backend, the 200 is the one we configured in the Unify controller, but the system automatically generate a VLAN 4040 with this hard-coded IP address. Let's see what's the situation in another side in the Enterprise XG switch. It's very, very similar to the left side. The only difference is the VLAN we configured for this switch is VLAN 100, right? And as you can see, it also automatically generates a VLAN 4040, but with a slightly different IP address. So if you have multiple layer 3 switches in your unified network, each one of them will have a slightly different IP address. For the VLAN 4040, you need to go to the system to find it out. Now let's check the routing table for both of them. In the left, let me run the command show IP route. The same in the right. Let's examine the two routing tables first. Let's look at the left side first. Let's say we have a device within VLAN 200. If it wants to reach out to VLAN 100, how the routing works, it will route to the VLAN 100 via this IP address. Where this IP address comes from, see the right side, is the IP address for the VLAN 4040 on another switch. So basically from the switch in the left side, if it wants to reach out to a VLAN managed in another switch, it need to first reach the VLAN 4040 in another switch. And then that switch will know how to route the VLAN traffic to the VLAN 100. If you start from the right side if you want to connect to VLAN 200 from the VLAN 100 similarly it has to go via this IP address where is this IP address coming from from the left side from this VLAN see this 253 dot four IP address. So that's how inter VLAN routing works when you have two different layer three unified switches. Next, let me change the port profile for this one and this one so that they will use the new VLAN configurations. First, go to the Enterprise XG and change the port for Synology NAS from VLAN 99 to VLAN 100. Then go to the Enterprise PoE change the part from VLAN 98 to VLAN 200. Now let me go to the MacBook to run the iPerf3 testing again. Let me run iPerf3 again. Okay, as you can see now the speed 
is back to normal, close to 2.5 gigabits. Next, trace route again. So keep in mind our source is 200 VLAN and the target is in 100 VLAN. From the first hop, as you can see, the IP address is 200.1. That's the gateway in the source switch. The second step, the 253.6, that's the special VLAN 4040s gateway in the target switch, the 100.100, that's the target IP address. The whole route has nothing to do with the PFSS. It's completely within the two layer three unified switches. In the end of the video, I would like to answer myself a question, which is whether I can create two VLANs on two different layer 3 switches, but with the same VLAN ID. I suppose the system shouldn't allow that, but let me confirm that. So here, as you can see on this Enterprise XG, I already have a VLAN 100, right? Now let me create a new VLAN on the enterprise PoE switch, but with a VLAN ID 100. Let me see whether I can do it. Create new network. Test new VLAN 100. And it's a corporate 100. Then the gateways switch then let me choose another one which is poe uh, let me give it a random ip address okay let me save it okay as expected it doesn't allow me to do that Okay, I'm good. Yeah, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.